I'm gonna try again. Did you bring back to the same one? No, this is a new one. Yup. Second try. <gasps> oh, it's working! At least on the tablet it is. Hey guys, I have no idea what is up <laughs> with my phone. I tried to do a live stream yesterday and on the Vonster vlog because it's just been one thing after another. Oh, but that's fine. We're here. We're hanging out. Everything's good. So, hey Echo, hey Drax, hey Dancing Tree. I wanted to give a shout out to our two newest members, Dreams and Zombie. Thank you guys for joining the channel membership over on the stream that wasn't working. Um, hey Sam, hey Teresa, hey Stephanie, hey Rebecca. So, hey guys, I'm Yvonne with Back to Earth Creations, and this is our last live stream before, last live stream, anything before going to Dragon Con. Next time we will see you guys, it will be post Dragon Con. So, it'll be after Dragon. <laughs> it'll, <Hashtag>. <laughs> it'll be hashtag after Dragon. <laughs> hey Jennifer, hey J Max, hey Krishna. It's working now. Yep, it sure is. Hey Kim. So, um, today, whew, Randy is laying out all of the dragon eyes that honestly he made them he like 95 98 percent of it was him making it well i painted all those eyes let's not forget um so but my hands do not hurt as bad as his said, do <laughs> yeah it's fair hey barbara well welcome to the live chat loud clapping yes <laughs> hey shelly but um so we're gonna be showing you guys what all we got made inventory wise um we're going to um and just be making we're gonna be stringing some jewelry and necklaces and stuff so just kind of hanging out yesterday the power went out while we like for most of our town actually um i still don't know what the matter was but um so that cut into our production so randy and i actually had like forced day off. A forced, well, a forced afternoon off, um, which was really cool. We went and saw a movie and waddled around the mall a little bit, which I like, but from a business perspective, it's very depressing because there's like, it's like vending a slow show. Like you just feel for the vendors whenever you're walking through. But uh, I just felt for the very bored looking employees um, of all the shops in the mall. But it was nice that we stood there and like stared at the lava lamps and Spencer's while eating ice cream. <laughs> it was a really good day. Um, so uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead. We went out and peopled. I don't know if I'd call it peopling. I think we talked to two other humans. Um, Let's see the person we bought tickets from uh -huh. and the person who gave us ice cream well we bought the ice cream but yeah and we didn't even speak to them hardly it's kind of yeah they didn't they were not particularly sociable and that's that's fine um and then yeah that was it that's all we talked to <laughs> so mo lockers yeah <laughs> hey sarah i'm glad you found us you went out and people yeah <laughs> but yeah he's still that's a six foot table that he is covering and dragonized just to are you not oh my god so we're gonna see how much it is when it's actually um when it's actually like all laid out so let me grab what i've been working on oh my gosh oh my gosh look at this little baloney chub of a dog it's just such a little piglet i love you little tired piglet did you want up in your chair you wanna lay in your chair a little bit? Do you want some tummy wubs? Do you want some tummy wubs? Oh, that's a big stretch. 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 Oh. <laughs> you good? No, you want my tummy rubs? Whoa. Her favorite thing is tummy rubs. Oh, something. She got some mosquito bites or something in her armpit. Oh, look at them jowls. Oh, them jowls, them flopping jowls. What were we doing? I don't know. <laughs> okay, come here, Millie. I got you, baby. Okay, you can come hang out with me over here. Okay. 
I'm just going to bring the whole tree, Lily. How about that? Give me them boogers. Give me them boogers. Okay. Alrighty. So. <laughs> now that we've retrieved the boogers. Now that I've retrieved the boogers. Uh oh. Well, I'm going to have to put this right back because my tripod is not <laughs> where it needs to be. <laughs> Don't you eat that. You're so cute, though. <laughs> Slamming my butt down into the chair. Nosh. I don't mean to. A nosh. She's a very sleepy, crafty puppy. Hard work being a dog all day. But yeah, she just sits in Maddie's chair and keeps the company. Hey, Gary, how's it going? Okay. There we go. Getting all situated. <laughs> Ooh, right on. J Max says, not only am I working on dragon eyes, but also glowing mushrooms. E. <laughs> okay, so today I'm going to need to get necklaces strung up for all of these. But the main thing that I've been working on. She looks like a little school child. <laughs> like. All pulled up to her desk, ready to learn. So these have been, ooh, right on Echo. Right? Oh, I don't think she's going to fit into a chair for too much longer, Drax. Not, at least not one of these. We're going to have to get a bigger, like a lazy boy just for her to lay in. <laughs> a lazy boy is for me. Yeah, right? So I got a bunch of these sculptures. They're super durable. Seen the earrings I've been working on? I have brandy. Those are really good. She says, now I'm doing the other colors and exploring other styles. That's phenomenal. And your nice, even, consistent weaving, that technique and skill is going to translate into just about every design that you tackle. So you, it looks like you've got really good foundation technique. So I can't wait to see what else you make. But we have... I went through and just snagged like 20 yeah 20 labradorites out of what would have been next week's shop update and set them all in polymer clay and this is a mix of silver sculpey not even sculpey primo but silver sculpey mixed in with the medium firm co uh, cost clay which is like very flexible Oh my gosh, he's almost already filled up that whole table. But, uh, I'll wait until he's done. Ooh, Stephanie says, I'm sorting spooky charms and I've come to realize that I have a problem. Mm, I don't know if I'd call it a problem, unless it's that you need more spooky charms. Um, but yeah, so I went through and I sculpted them all, the silver mixed in with the cost clay with a little bit of the black sculpey. Um... And then uh, these ones across the top, I just sealed with Mod Podge. These ones, I did some copper acrylic paint around the edges. These ones, I did some like sunset gold um, on around on the whole thing actually. And then these guys, I used my favorite Jacquard paint, the uh, Lumiere paints by Jacquard, the Halo blue green. And I went through and I painted. All of those ones. Now the made that the the way that we made these um, is I had put and the, all of them have a leaf imprint on the back, and each one had its own leaf because these are actually morning glory leaves that I some of them are maple because um, I needed to prune back this little like maple bonsai project that I've got going on in the back. But they're either maple or morning glory. Like this one was a maple. That one was a maple. But, uh, yeah, so they each had their own little leaf, which is very cool. But you can see we are going to be threading bead stringing material through here. So we have our Beadalon 49 strand 
And I actually think I'm going to do a tutorial on this design if you guys are interested in that. But now we can just thread directly through, and it's a pendant, but it's a bead. So now we can just string it in with some other gemstone beads. Um, and I'm going to be making all of these into uh, necklaces, because that's the main thing that we need a whole bunch of. Ooh, good luck, Tashers! There it is. Um, I didn't drill them. The way that the way that we did it is I did the front piece first. Like y'all might remember this one from a different tutorial. It was made entirely out of cost clay, but was very flexible, so the cab kept popping out. So what I did is I used that same Sculpey blend, which really stiffened it up a bit. But um, and I did the leaf imprint, and then set it like cut it out. And then after I had made and sculpted the front uh, and baked it, you want to bake the front first. That way you don't have to worry about any sort of distorting. Hey, Jenny Jacks. Um, and then I set an 18 gauge wire that I'd shaped around this mandrel to make it kind of, you know, um, curved. I set that so you can kind of do, 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 do. The thread line goes right through there. I think this one I tried straight across, but I preferred the, the curve. And then, oh, hey, Hawk. No, I see you. I'm just having a hard time keeping up with comments. And I was in top chat instead of live chat. I'm so sorry. But uh, it does help a lot when y'all do like how Tasha's just did and do the at Yvonne Williams. It does highlight your name, um, like your comment with orange on my phone. And that does help. Uh, that does help me to see your comments. Because I, sometimes I don't know if y'all are talking to me or talking to each other. And so I just keep prattling on and then figure if you guys have a question for me you'll at my name um so Jean says just joined the craft thingy today where is my star <laughs> and will I be able to join in the after party today well hey Jean um if you join you, you only get the star from joining the channel membership on YouTube that's out of my control like I'm not able to go in and make the people who are in our happy crafter club uh for the one and one or five dollar membership levels have a star over here um you get a blue star by clicking the uh y'all if you want you can join our channel it should be down um i don't know how to find it it should be right down by the subscribe button below the video viewer it doesn't show it on mine <laughs> right on jack but um but yeah so i put the 18 gauge wire onto the soft unbaked clay used the lid to press it in just gently enough and then hey donna and then i, I kind of sculpted it on so like i said i will be doing a tutorial on how to make this style of component what's up little baby you seem upset are you okay Are you just a dog? Oof, and then we have these guys cleaned up from our most recent tutorial. That was a whole lot of fun, by the way. So I'm going to put bales on those. So we get to set up some necklaces that uh, I think Randy has agreed to help me string up. Uh, thanks, you guys. Um, uh, right on, Sarah. She said, loved that last tutorial. Plan to try it out. I can't wait to see what y'all make. Ooh, where's Gnome going? Must now be flogged for being in top chat. <laughs> right, Gary? Um, okay, going to leave for a bit. Hoping to make it back before I head to work. Right on. Well, whichever way goes, which and Gnome, uh, have a great rest of your day. Okay. Dun, dun. Gotcha. Jean says, I saw where Randy made 300 dragon eyes, right? I thought you missed me, me saying hello and wishing you luck for tomorrow. I'm excellent and super happy to be catching these lives. Ooh, oh, she's saying that's Tasha's though. Okay. And Hawk says, I made the glow-in-the-dark mushrooms, but they don't glow as much as I want them to. Can I paint them with glow paint to make them brighter? Definitely. I really recommend doing a couple of layers of dry brushing of a glow paint. That way it really makes the high points pop. 
um, and you can have a little bit more control over the addition of pigment that way. Okay, and then also I do need to go through and polish up all of our uh, Ankh pendants. Ooh, hey Sharon. She says, where do you purchase cabs that are not flat back? Oh, I don't know. Um, I, I would search undrilled pillow beads, possibly. You okay, Millie? Hey, Randy. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could take her outside in a little bit? Yeah. Okay. I'm running out of space. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's amazing you laying them out like that, honey. Come on, Millie. Okay, let me grab... We are going to be designing the necklaces today, too. Like, doing the bead lineup. So, the monsters for dinner, but truly, I need to... But true, I need to make more jewelry. <laughs> So I'm going to start, I'm going to be doing all of these in Labradorite as much as possible. Um, so here is, it would have really been helpful for me to clean up from my last couple of projects, but I'm just not about that light. Um, don't I have another one of these? somewhere <laughs> I could go grab a fresh one and this is my problem with these bead things is I always um I'm a monster basically hey Michelle how's it going Fresh in its original packaging. So this is this will never be not this dusty ever again. <laughs> okay, now I do make it a point. Oh my god, you can see so much it's faded. Oh no. <laughs> you can see how much the just the color difference. Oh boy. That's fine. So I'm gonna kind of pile on the crap onto this thing. I'm the source of all of my problems. Okay. So I'm going to take, I think I've got more of these eight millimeter beads somewhere. Okay. Being right back again. Randy's not here. Tell me not to. Mm. That's pretty good stuff. Hey, Shalene. Oh, it's all right. You are fashionably late. We're just getting started. So, wow. Also, here you can see the difference between grade A labradorite. Actually, this is double A uh, labradorite beads and C grade labradorite beads. So, that's okay. I'm just going to use both in all of the necklaces. Um, so I'm actually going to be taking all of my 8mm Labradorite beads. Um, because I'm going to be designing for 21 necklaces. <laughs> so I'm going to have to kind of get this set up. There we go. There's that. Yeah, it's starting to look kind of like something's blowing in, huh? Oh really? But I ain't seeing no light. Huh? Okay. But we did get a poopy. Oh, <gasps> she's such a good pooper. Some might say a super pooper. No one. Ooh, no one would say that. I would say that. I. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Ooh, 
right on, Kelly. Oh, J Max says, I used Sculpey Glow in the Dark and used Prolux Powder Pigments to highlight the design. Turquoise did better with the glow than the Reflex Violet color. Violet dulled out the glow. Right on. And that's the kind the, that's what makes it so fun to experiment, honestly, I think, with polymer clay. It's always an adventure. <laughs> well, every little millimeter in the right direction, Kelly. Ah, hey, Kit. <laughs> Uh, hey baby, should I do green adventuring or moss agate? Moss agate. Moss agate. My man. So now I'm grabbing a six millimeter moss agate, which I do think, other than amethyst, is one of my favorite colors to pair with uh, labradorite. So, What's up, my love? Okay, this is the bottom of the tray. Oh my lanta. Oh my god. <laughs> and that's how much is still in the tray. <laughs> Randy, oh my honey. Yes. I'm so proud of you. You do so good. Well. And y'all are going to be thinking that I was cracking a whip or something over Randy. He did this himself. He is so self-motivated. <laughs> he did this his own self. He's a freak. <laughs> but um, no, he does. He does so good. Like I couldn't do what we do without Randy and his work ethic and just. Whew. He's a champion. Ty. Huh. Okay, so those are some six millimeter. Now I'm gonna try to find some four millimeter beads. tray of four millimeter but I'm actually gonna take you guys over here with me because diving through beads can be pretty fun and it's certainly more interesting to dive through beads with me than to just stare at the blank <laughs> so I think it's this one actually you know it drives me down right croak bonkers that ooh, what are those the same for bonkers. I was looking freaking everywhere for these black and red beads. Could not find them. Is it this one? Right. What'd you find? The black and red beads. Mm, here it is. This is my stash. Ooh, I think I'll use that this African jade or the green adventuring. I don't know. We'll see what looks good. But I found the thing. All right, guys, back on over yonder. Millie, what you doing? What you doing, Millie doll? What you doing? Okay. Hey, Donna. Okay. Does anyone here buy molds for resin crafting off Etsy? Looking for store suggestions if anyone has any. But a bunch of molds last night and looking for great deals. Ooh, I don't, but I hope chat has something to offer for you, zombie. What happened, Gary? <laughs> Tasher said, holy shit, that's what 300 dragon necklaces looks like, huh? Let me just attempt to put my eyeballs back in my head. Amazing work. Do what, love? Not yet. Not yet. Randy doesn't have all of them laid out yet. Okay, so 
We have our eight millimeter beads. We have our six millimeter. I'm digging out some, what's up, babe? <gasps> In one spot. I'm gonna be pulling out the four millimeter, which I guess I have a whole bunch. So years and years ago, you guys, like back when maybe our second or third Fire Mountain Gems order, Randy and I had invested in a whole bunch of Fire Mountain Gems bulk beads. Now they're a lower quality in that they're not all perfectly round. They might not be all exactly the same size, but we were able to get amazing deals on just about all of these beads. And good news, you guys, beads don't go bad. Um, so that was a large and focused investment like way back when, but now we have these beads in stock for like a long long time and so it's and it, I, I knew i was like it, as long as i'm making necklaces i'm going to be using four millimeter beads like this is just a fact of my existence now Ooh, gonna do your basement floor in hollow oh my gosh you might want to um email the different manufacturers. Hey, Nelly. She's tangled in the tripod. Uh, you might want to contact the manufacturers of like um, on Amazon and stuff and see if you can coordinate a bulk order or to maybe look into uh, where contractors or construction folks who do the poured countertops might get their own halo powder or hollow powder. Sorry. Like solar color dust is the first one that comes to mind. Ooh, right on, Iris. Okay, so now I'm going to be looking for, I'd like to put in some metal beads. And I think I'm gonna be using the brass tone. And then let me find some silver spacer beads. So again, we're gonna come Back over here. I think you're right. Okay. So I keep my metal beads a little lower down on the shelf. Oh my god, my floor's filthy. Oh well. <laughs> so here we have some more brass toned beads and different things but we also have some really nice these ones do what love I expected no uh, don't let her chew on it though it's gonna, it's a plastic that shatters so it would be sharp little pieces. Sorry. Okay, well I already found the beads that I thought it was going to take me ages to find. So we're back over here now. Sorry. Well, and the whole reason why I brought the tripod is because I was like, I'm going to be over here a minute. I wouldn't have bothered moving the tripod back and forth. Okay, so this is actually a peek into history one of my very first bead trays and it still has stuff from when we were buying steampunk watch parts off of ebay this is whenever i very first got into leather working and i had bought some rivets from hobby lobby but i'm going to be incorporating these beads that are just little steel beads oh, threw that one on the ground Okay, so that should be enough. If it's not, I'll come back and get more. Very fun tray to play with. So I'm gonna put all these guys over here on that side. And now I get to decide, I'm probably gonna end up having to use both, 
but I have two different bead caps that I'm interested in using. So I'm just going to use a bit of scrap wire to see if I prefer that as the bead cap, Oops. which these are the ones that I don't have as much of, or if I want that as the bead cap. Stars says, I have my first craft show coming up on the 3rd. I'm so excited and stressed. Ah, oh, don't stress it. Channel all that stress into something that makes you feel productive and like you did your best to prepare. So mock booth setups, um, working on inventory, fine-tuning how your money box method. What were you going to say, love? I wouldn't recommend Dragon Eyes. <laughs> Randy says he would not recommend Dragon Eyes, but honestly, I would. I hope they sell well. <laughs> So I, I actually like both of those. Let me put one on each side. I prefer this one, but I think we're going to end up, I don't know. We'll see. I, I like the first one better too, you guys. We'll see how far it can get us. Millie's like low key freaking me out right now. Or no. she just keeps rooting around. She's just a bored puppy and I can't play with her and it makes me nervous. Okay, so I'm digging a bunch of these. So, of course, like most things, it's a lot of prep work here on the front end, and then hopefully the whole project just falls in together. Okay, so again, I still have the bead tray out if it turns out that I need to um, get more or something. Hey, Virginia. She says, I have my first big one coming up next month, and I'm freaked out that I might not have enough inventory. Oh, it, again, don't freak out, you guys. Just um, kind of make a plan. And if you do a mock booth setup and know how much space you have that you need to fill, that really is, I think, the best method I can recommend for knowing how much. Because otherwise, it's this scary big number of, you know, this big undefined number of, you know, scariness. And it's like, really, you just need to figure out how much jewelry you can display that way you can know exactly how much jewelry you need to make, you know, for displaying. Still going. I'm just trying to give Millie something to do other than chewing on that corner of the vent. <laughs> okay. So now I know that in each necklace I'm going to want... Sorry, the tripod's right in my freaking face. It's freaking me out. There we go. How's it going? Oh, Tasher says your mock booth setup video changed my life in all the best ways. Oh, I'm so, I'm really glad to have been helpful to you, but it's, I know that this stuff can be tricky because, I mean, even if we all, like, are, if y'all followed every single one of my tutorials and did everything exactly like in the videos, it's still going to come out unique to you and your, um, you know, your tastes and your preferences and just everything, so. Okay. How many tables? I have just plugged my ears. Do what? How many tables do you think, or do they think, 300 dragon eyes? Well, you've got to specify. Six 
Like, like uh, how many six foot tables, how many four foot tables, how many end tables. Okay, Randy is asking, how many tables do you guys think 300 dragon eyes will fill up? Why is, why is people mad at Gary? What Gary do? <laughs> Virginia says, I have three six foot tables to fill in right now. If I display one of each item with duplicates and boxes below, I have to have two layers on my table. So I added the buildable wire boxes. Ooh, right on. Nicole says 2.5. See, that's what Drax is asking. She says, what size table? Iris says three big tables. Tasher says three tables. I'm talking American tables. <laughs> you know, Ooh, right on, nice. stars. So I'm not going to be having the stone setting, like I'm not going to be having this setting in the middle because it takes up too much space. What I'm going to do is just know that I'm designing around that and then I'm building four necklaces worth on this. I'm gonna hand it over to Randy and then I'm going to set up four necklaces worth on the other tray and kind of just kind of go that way. Do you want me to show them? I'm done. You done? I'm done. That's all of them. What do you think? That's all I got. Yeah? What do you think of that, mister? You don't know? Should have made more. Should have made more? <laughs> Is that really your thought process when you see that? <laughs> so everybody who guessed three tables was technically correct. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. It also depends on how you place them, sideways or long ways. Yeah. Ah, uh, got them you, Gary. Where they would fit. <laughs> Do what? I placed them where they would fit. He says he placed them where they will fit. Oh. <laughs> and Gary says, yep, should have made more. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Honey, this is. This is the most dragon eyes we've ever had in stock at one time. Easily. Easily. I don't know if this is more dragonized than what we've ever made, like cumulatively. Mm, probably not. This is more than what we used to make in. Are you mean in this design or just dragonized? In, in this design. Oh yes, this is definitely. Because we used to feel proud that like, oh, we made ten dragon eye necklaces for this next show. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, though, we were. Making a lot of that. We were. Which we still were this time, too. You were. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. <sighs> so I need to get a video of that and throw that on my Instagram. Yep. If things you want to. So I'm going to be establishing the design to start with. I think I'm going to have brass beads. I don't know. Let's look and see if we have something in seed beads. You want to read what everybody's saying? Maybe. What are you chewing on? <laughs> Joette says, I hope you sell them all. I hope so too, Joette. I hope so too. What are you chewing on? You can't. You can't just. Natasha says, But can I roll around in them like Scrooge McDuck? That's... If you buy them. <laughs> and Randy says, If you buy them. <laughs> you buy it. I'm not going to tell you what to do with it. That's fair. Ooh, now that would look really cool. We've got those iris beads. Are you, Ooh. Hmm? Are you upset that I'm in your chair? <laughs> so your chair. these are iris gold beads. I think these are what I'm going to be using in along in between these as well. So we have a combination of size eight seed beads, this lolly bead pack, um, off of Amazon, some eight millimeter six lab labradorite, six millimeter and four millimeter moss agate, uh, just some like slightly faceted metal beads that I actually think I traded somebody for a bunch of, um, like years ago, or they might've been from Jim. I'm not certain. Um, so I'm going to do... You are a ninja. It got really mad. It does. 
Okay, yeah, we're not going to have enough of these to do all 20 necklaces, but we'll see how far it gets us. So I'm just getting the bead caps lined up. And they're not wanting to, but that's fine. Ah, hey, Natalie. Welcome to being a channel member. Can you help me? I yeah. need this bottom tray. Now back on there. Perfect, thank you. I still don't think we should teach her to think that hands are toys. I'm not. Okay. I'm just overstimulated, so I'm putting the earplugs back in, so I'm not going to be able to hear you. Yeah. But i got to get into the zone. You let me know when that's ready. Okay. Bless yep. you. All right, puppy. I have been so sound sensitive lately. Ooh, Kit said, I just used a saw for the first time today. You should have seen us decked out in PPE, face mask, cat ear, headphones, <laughs> glasses instead of goggles. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, you got to be careful. You might lose a finger. That's true. Well, I got better. Do what? I said I got better. Okay. You did. <laughs> I'm just, I'm having the hardest time putting this earplug in, and every time I get super close to it actually fitting in right, you say something. So I have to pull it out so I can hear what you said. It, it's, it's to the point that it feels like you're watching me do it and doing it on purpose. Okay. Okay, there we go. So I think I'm going to have, yep. I'm just going to design one first and then go from there. It really seems like he is, Gary. And it's like the thing is, is because it's like 500 million degrees, apparently, um, is what it feels like. That's fine. I could hear that even through my earplugs. Okay. That one. There is no one there. That one. I feel like my fingers get in the way. And then we'll do that one and that one. So I'm just trying to build up the design the same on each side. Hey, Kit Kat. Oh, this is. It's a coffee mug that my friend Christina gave me and it has coffee in it that my friend Brandon made me. Aw, oh, coffee's gone. Coffee's gone. <laughs> it's okay, I don't need another cup. Alrighty. Oh no, Stephanie. I have bags of charms laying all over my keyboard. You heading out? Yeah. Thank you, baby. Okay. So, now the thing is with these assorted beads is I kind of have to be careful about not all of the colors are consistent. So, I mean, and that's natural to the stone. So, right, Kit Kats? <laughs> Ooh, zombie. Like a heathen. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm putting beads on either side there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open this so that I can kind of see. I think I'm going to be using the 4 millimeter in the brass. Oops. I really like that, that little pattern right there. 
Hey, Lisa says, it's been a while since I've been in the chat. How is Millie feeling? Millie is all better. She is a super pooper and is just doing great, which we're very, very pleased to uh, be able to announce. Uh, she's gotten all of her puppy shots and they're going to be checking up on her again as we're boarding her for Dragon Con. Mm -hmm. So once I've established a pattern that I'm enjoying, Um, I'm gonna, so I really like the 4mm brass, 6mm moss, brass, glass, 4mm moss, gra glass, brass, so, so just kind of that little repetition I'm going to try to repeat throughout. So anytime that we're tapering down off of a larger bead, I'm gonna put that right there, and that's gonna build us up to, we're gonna need a little size 8 glass bead. And then I just want this one right up against the metal bead. So we're going to be doing that. And then a glass. And then a glass. And then we will have our next 8mm in bead caps. Because I may not actually set the bead caps in with it because it makes things clumsy on the bead mat. Um, and then it will be a 4 and then a five millimeter. We're, we're glad to, Lisa. Okay, so now, and these ones, and I had somebody actually comment that it's like, they're not coated, they're just matte. And it's like, you see how these look different than these ones? whenever I roll it around it now looks like the other ones so these ones are coated in some sort of powder um, <coughs> excuse me so we have that and then back down to the four millimeter and then bead 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 cap bead. Then what do we have? Okay, another four millimeter. Gonna be a mullet chain? It is. Yep, beads in the front, chain in the back. And it just, it keeps us from having to charge twice as much for our necklaces. And gives it a lot more room for um, adjustability as well. There's that, and then I've got that one, and then we'll do glass, and then we'll do brass. And we've got that one with the bead caps, and then, oh, those two are stuck together. Ooh, I don't know, we, maybe? Uh, we got a lot of really generous gifts in the mail that didn't have a note with them, uh, but we will be airing the vlog on Saturday. Um, so if it was you, you can, <laughs> you can let us know. <laughs> uh, right on. Mm -hmm. Uh, hey, Janet. She says, I really enjoy watching you put the necklace signs together. I learn a lot from you. Oh, well, I, I do hope that this is helpful. <laughs> okay, where am I? I'm right here. Okay, so glass bead. Glass. Four millimeter. Glass. There's the doggy squeaker toy that I can still hear even through my earplugs, but that's fine. <laughs> and then another four millimeter. Then. So oftentimes this part here is just what takes the longest. So that's why I'm going to go ahead. Now before before I mass produce this on all the things like how we talked about, um, I am going to go ahead and string it 
And what I like about these trays is you can get a rough idea of about how much thread you're going to need. And I like to give myself six to eight inches beyond that. There's that. Here's my wire snips. Hey, Randy, my love. Mm -hmm. Can I have your crimp pliers, please? Sure. Thank you. Ooh, chapstick. from Harambe's arm. No, Harambe. Oh, she killed him dead. His arm's off. Yeah, she ripped his arm right off. <laughs> I don't think I can fix him this time. I would not like this squeaker. Thank you, though. <laughs> okay, so here I have some tube crimp beads. Um, Because there are round crimp beads that I really enjoy using this crimper with because you can see it makes them be round, but I don't really like it with the tube crimp beads. I still prefer the um, the crimp pliers that I'm used to. So there's that. Let me go ahead and, and it can see, it, there, it seems like there's a lot of steps and I guess really there, there are, but it's don't let the, don't let it seem complicated and scare you off from I just have a lot going on here because I'm doing 20 necklaces. If you're doing just one necklace, <laughs> right, it doesn't take a couple of days. She she tears the squeaky part right off pretty quick. She killed him dead. She did. <laughs> okay, so these are 18 gauge, 1 8 inch rings from Chainmail Joe on Amazon. And I'm going to pick this up. Oh, thanks you guys and I'm gonna go ahead and close two of them because these are what I'm gonna be using for the ends it's what we attach the chain to um, you could use a split ring or something like that not necessary I, I don't feel especially with this 18 gauge that is sturdy so now I'm going to thread on and in the past I've used multiple uh, crimp beads. I'm just using one today because that works out pretty well. So I've threaded it on and then through, I've threaded on the crimp bead and then threaded the beading wire through the ring. And now I'm going to put the crimp tube over both wires. And now you can see there's an oval closest to the tip and a kidney bean closest to the you know handle I'm gonna do the kidney bean side first and that smushes that down and then we turn it a bit and I smush it the other way and now with these crimp tubes sometimes they'll feel a little baggy and just for good measure I'll go back into the kidney side and just do it again to make it all the more compact <laughs> right on, Laura. Oh, uh, Drax, I got these on Amazon. But typically, I like shopping on Fire Mountain Gems to find something that I really like. Um, and then I try to find something comparable for something that I don't have to, like, you know, order a ton to get the all assortable pricing. Okay, and now we're going to start stringing up our design. Joette says, have you ever given her a plastic water bottle? I did earlier today, um, and she absolutely loved it. I put some rocks in it so I can throw it better without the wind catching it, but yeah, she, she liked it. Okay, so before I actually start stringing this on, I want to give it a little bit more length with our seed beads, these size 8 seed beads. <laughs> so that is Randy on my Monster Vlog channel over there. If you guys are interested in more behind the scenes stuff, be sure to check us out. Um, we post, currently we've been posting just once a week after finishing up the year of yoga. Um, but we will be hopefully posting two, maybe three times a week um, after Dragon. After we've made the great pilgrimage into Atlanta. Ooh, Shipwreck is another good place for 
for good beads. So there I've threaded on just 10 and we could do more. I gave us quite a bit. So let's go ahead and do 25. That's a nice round number. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. and 15. Yeah, I make sure that that little bit of tail from the beading wire um, goes inside the beads. That way it's nice and contained. But yeah, now we have a nice little bit of very comfortable to wear um, glass beads. And now we're going to start threading on the design. And inexpensive uh, glass seed beads are probably one of my favorite ways of extending gemstone like bead strung designs. Um, especially for if folks have like metal allergies or something, it's really nice to have those glass beads up against your skin instead of uh, metal or chain or something that might tangle up in your hair or anything like that. So I just thread it on and I keep it there in my hand and then whoop, sliding it on down. And I feel like that tangled. So we're going to, there we go. Oops, one of them got out of order. You're out of order. Do, do. So just threading those through. This part is very zen. Like, honest to goodness, uh, Randy and I have been getting a lot of crafting done watching The Legend of Korra, which we have not seen before, so no spoilers. I know we're really behind the ball on that one. And then you do a bead cap, making sure it's facing the big end towards the bead. Putting the bead on, and then the other bead cap. Bye, Drex's mom. Thank you so much. We'll definitely keep you posted. So then we have our four millimeter metal, our little glass bead, our four millimeter moss agate, our metal bead, which has like a little pokey bit. I'm gonna take my wire snips to that. There we are. Ooh, no, and I don't even know who Genji is, so I don't, I don't want to, don't tell me anything. <laughs> but the, it is really good so far. We're still in book one. Um, but this is the type of project that I absolutely love to just sit around and hang out. Because once you get the beads set up, as so long as you don't drag your stuff through the project, um, then it should be easy sailing from here. So we on to the next seed bead. Or next uh, eight millimeter with bead caps already. And then we're going to do our four millimeter metal and then our five millimeter metal. And now we get to thread on our. Oh, and that worked perfect. I was really worried that with the curve being in there. And then I always test when I get to the halfway point to make sure that I do actually have enough wire, uh, beading wire, to get through the rest of the project. Because um, if not, I'm only halfway in. I don't have to re-thread everything. And now we just continue up the other side. Where'd that bead cap go? Then we'll just do a little bead, then a glass. Ooh, right on. I haven't seen that. Are you enjoying it, Hawk? Ooh. 
surgery is so scary. I hope you're going to be okay. Ooh, right on, Iris. Um, the wire that I'm using is bead along. It is bead stringing wire. And that is really, really important because this is very flexible. Um, like if I were making miniatures, I'd use this in place of like steel cable tension wire. It's kind of constructed in the same way you can see here in the image. Um, but I'm using the 49 strand, though this is a little thick for some of the gemstone beads that I have. Sometimes I have to use this stuff, which is only a seven strand, but it still holds up just fine. What if you only have fishing wire? I have actually strung up on fishing wire before. It just gets a little tricky tying the knots at the ends. Ooh. Oh, I'm not sure, certain, Catherine. Um, hopefully we'll have the tutorial out. Um, it might be the next one that we do. Uh, because we're not gonna have one this coming Thursday while we're at Dragon Con. Um, but whenever we get home, we may, it may be that tutorial. Because I think that, I mean, that's really versatile and I love having something that strings and hangs and behaves like a bead but looks like a pendant like a nice focal point ah right on hawk and so we're getting the rest of this strung up and this will also give me a much more accurate idea stringing up this one necklace first um of how much beading wire I actually need to use because I don't like to over waste this stuff. There's that bead. There we go. But yeah, I really like the shape of that. And so, yeah, you can see here, if we just stopped there, this, I really like the, what was it, 25? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to get some water real quick. Uh, Nikki says, can the end of the string be melted to connect to the end? From London, UK, staying up to watch you live. Well, hey, Nikki. Um, with this stuff, I don't think that would work because it does have metal there on the inside. Um, and I don't necessarily recommend um, this beetle-on wire for tying knots in. You may have better luck with that with something like fishing line. Um... And you can also, you can thread this stuff up on linen or silk or nylon um, beading thread. Uh, like there's all sorts of different options. Like you could use just a spool of thread. Um, kind of fold it over like so that you're using, you know, more than single ply thread. Um, and you could even do like a little knot in between each bead. Like there's... The, the only right or wrong way of making jewelry, I feel, you know, unless, like, you're specifically doing, like, metallurgy or something where it does get a little bit more, um, you know, there's a, a, a set method to it. But unless you're doing that, as so long as it looks the way that you want, is comfortable to wear and holds together, then you did it right. There's 16... 
25. Ooh, right on. Hey, Patio. She says the wire comes in 0 0.018 49 strand and 0 0.013. It looks like I've got the 0 0.018 stuff. I haven't, Gary. How did things go at Bristol? I hope I hope it went well. Okay, so now we put on our crimp bead, then we put on our ring that we've closed already, and then I'm going to thread back through. I try to shoot for like an inch or so. A little less isn't the end of the world. Pulling that down nice and snug. Now we're going to come in here and crimp. Whoop. And then crimp and then pinch to make sure that it's still nice and together. <clears throat> there we go. And now I'm going to snip that. So I mean, that was our extra little bit, but you can see here. I mean, you can tie this into knots. It just has a tendency that if you just do a single knot, like, it just, it doesn't hold tension very well. It's going to ease itself back open. So that's something that you'll want to keep in mind. Hmm. Um, Catherine says, do you think the beading wire could eventually cut through the polymer clay in the pendant? Um... I don't see why it would any more than what a wire threaded through it would do. And also, since there's not, there's not a whole, like, there's not movement here. There's some drape, but there's no sliding and moving of the wire inside the bead. Like, if, so I don't think it would be able to, like, saw teeth just pressed up against something aren't going to cut through it the way that saw teeth rubbing up against something would. So, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not going to say, no, that'll never happen. Because, I mean, who knows? Um, but I, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> and also, this is, there's, I mean, three millimeters of polymer clay for it to work its way through. Oops. And it is pretty super durable. So... <laughs> Oh no! I'm so sorry, Hawk. <laughs> I actually thought to myself, I was like, I bet somebody's counting stitches right now. <laughs> okay, so, wow, I love the way that that looks, you guys. Oh, love it. Okay, so, and that actually got us pretty close to, if I didn't put any chain on this, uh, someone with a very petite neck could wear it as a choker. This is sitting at 14 inches, 14 and a half. So once we'd have the clasp on it, it'd be 15. Now I'm still going to do probably about this much chain in the back. Um, but yeah, so there is one. It took me, what, an hour and a half to make one necklace? Yee! That's fine. Okay, so now we get to set this up and duplicate this design times four. So I'm actually gonna go one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna do a six millimeter. Boop, 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 boop. And then we do another brass one. And then we do a glass one. But yeah, I just scoop up a big greedy handful. <laughs> and then now we've got a four millimeter. One, two, three, four. And then another glass. Boop, 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 boop. And then, yep. One, two, three. <laughs> well, I'm glad I've got more of these wee bitty ones. I'm not glad that they're all mixed into my four millimeter, but that's fine. 
it is what it is. Uh, we will. I'll, I'll be showing y'all how to add the chain. I'm gonna get these set up so Randy can start stringing them for me. Okay, so there's the brass, and now another six millimeter. Boop 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 boop. And then some more brass. Boop, 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 boop. But yeah, I just always want to go through and do the first stringing just to make sure that it drapes nicely, it looks balanced, it looks like it's flowing well um, before, you know, prototype before you commit to mass producing. <laughs> okay, glass. Ooh, um, these are gemstone cabochons that have been set in polymer clay. They will be what our next tutorial is on, I have decided officially. Okay. And the nice thing about this is you can actually take this same design and swap out bead colors or bead shapes or metal tones and really make a wide variety of necklaces. Now, I'm going to kind of be making a whole bunch that are exactly the same until I start running out of stuff, and then the design is going to start evolving. Okay, so there's that. So now we're on to here. Well, Randy, it looks like whatever weather we were going to have has blown right over. Yeah, it's down to a 30% chance of rain. Man, I was really hoping it was going to spit some water on us. Okay, and now bead cap time, which I'm actually just going to knot with the bead caps just yet. There we go, because I'm just going to put them on whenever we uh, string it. Though I don't know, I still hear like thunder and stuff. And now glass. <laughs> Witchy Gnome says, made it home, time to relax and finish up the small details on a few things before work. <laughs> oh, digging deep for a second wind, I hear that, man. You got this, though. Okay, and now metal beads. Doot, doot. Doot, doot. Now four millimeter again. Doot, 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 doot. If there are any beads that are like wildly different from the other ones, I'll leave them set aside until I have enough of them that are, well, they're wildly different from the bulk, they still kind of match each other a little bit, and then I'll do a necklace that's just those ones. So I don't want it to be too, like, different. Amy. <laughs> well, I'm so glad somebody got the rain. Organic. Well, thank you. I really like making them. You can see, I think these are buckwheat balls that they tumble them in. Sometimes there'll still be little bits of that. There we go. Right? 
have y'all been doing, pro? So that's our halfway mark. So now I'm going to just kind of go down the line. And repeat it on the way back. So yeah, somebody had asked in one of our last videos, um, if, or I think maybe in last week's live stream, um, if these bead boards were worth it. And yeah, it's for projects like this. I, I love them. I just wish I were more diligent about putting my beads away after the fact. those four. No. Did I do that wrong? Oh goodness, I did. I made this one. Well, there's a little indiscrepancy. That'll be fine. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> it's already like that. That'll be alright though, I think. What's that? Um, I had put one too many beads on one side than the other. But... Oh, I see. What? Hey, Lynn! This is my first chat message. Well, I'm glad I saw it. <laughs> Like, did I miss something in chat? No. Oh, okay. Okay, so now we're on to another moss agate. Mm-hmm. They're lolly beads on Amazon. I try to put them next to larger beads, that way they st stay kind of elevated off of the skin a little bit, but I haven't had any problems with them, nor have our customers, but we have had folks uh, chime in and chat that they turn black on them, so I, I don't know. <sighs> yeah. We're cheering you on, pro. Yeah, same, Iris. That's what I liked about this, is that they were all, like, the same, more or less. Like, just really nice gradiated sizes. Like, if I could find a kit like this on, like, Fire Mountain of, like, sterling beads, that would make my day. <laughs> okay, so now we've got... There we go. And there we go. Then metal again. And then glass. One, two, three, four. But yeah, so it's, what's it called? Economy of scale? I'm trying to learn, like, business things, I guess. But, uh, the whole, like, you know, the amount of work that it takes to do one seems like quite a bit. But then whenever you scale it up, it's only slightly more work to set out enough beads for four. Hey, Gabby, how's it going? <laughs> So there's that one. Do do do. Onto glass again. Boop 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 boop. Onto metal. 
boop, 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 and boop. Now under the six millimeter, boop, 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 boop. And then under these again, boop, 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 and boop. And then the glass. Boop, 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 okay, there we go, and then the four millimeter, boop, boop, oops, boop, 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 sound effects are uh, definitely required, they help, they help everything come together. All right on. But yeah, and considering it took me, what, an hour? Hour and a half to get set up in one necklace mode, and now we're 10 minutes in. Thank you, Nicole, for pointing that out. That's, I mean, really representative of how you can streamline by just kind of duplicating. Like with the clay, I already had all the clay out. I already had to condition a bit of it, and if I'm running it through the pasta machine, I may as well be doing enough clay for, you know, at least a couple of pendants as opposed to just the one. And so that's probably the, I mean... I don't ever want to encourage people to treat their art like they're trying to mass produce it because just because I am a workaholic doesn't mean that y'all need to be. Um, <laughs> so I'm not here to tell you what to think or how to go about things. I'm just explaining why I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it. That way, if it fits what you're trying to do, then you can take it and run with it. Catherine says, are you leaving out the bead caps and seed beads? I am incorporating the seed beads. I leave the, I'm not going to count out 25 and have them stacked on here because I don't have enough space. Um, I did leave the bead caps out, so I'm just going to have Randy, because he's going to be stringing these for me. I've got this, I've set this one here so he knows those ones will use that style of bead cap. I've got this one set here so that he'll know that that row uses that style of bead cap and then I'm going to mirror it on the other side. Uh, oh Marie, oh that's a good idea. <laughs> this is why don't you work at both ends and then meet in the middle. I don't know, this is just how I was doing it. Hey Wendy. Baby? Hey Randy? Mm -hmm. You wanna come help? Yeah. Okay. Couldn't tell if you couldn't hear me or if you're ignoring me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to scooch this off to the side. Um, I've got a work surface over here directly to my right for Randy. You gonna sit in Maddie's chair? Yeah. Right on. Okay, and now. Gotcha. I guess I can use my legs. What? Okay, so what I've got going on here is I'm gonna get your wires ready mm -hmm. for you to thread on. If you'll do 25 of these. Mm -hmm. And then start stringing up whenever you get to these beads they use these bead caps mm -hmm. these ones use these bead caps okay. um and then where there's a gap down the middle is where you'll thread these ones okay it doesn't matter which way they're facing um but yeah, just make sure to thread them in the middle, and then you just proceed up the other side, and then 25 on the other end. Alright. Give me just a second, I'll have this ready for you. We are going to be having an after party today. We're just going to be stringing beads and shooting the wind. Did I do all these? I did, okay. And so, now I can take this and really see how much like what do you think of that mm -hmm. i like it a lot Me too. like i love i love that <laughs> it feels really good 
to do something that Past Vaughn had wanted to do but didn't know how. Mm. And now it's like, ee! this is just nice. <laughs> like, I like it when hard work pays off. Now you have to know how. All right, on Kelly. Are there no craft shows and stuff in your area? Or are you looking for something in particular and nothing's fitting? There's no time for it. Nicole says it usually takes me longer to pick out beads and set up than it does to make something. Same. Same. <laughs> Woo! Oh, right on, Kit. I'd love to see that. So now that I've measured one, I'm going to measure out all four. Oh, thank you, Christy. Honest to goodness, working with Labradorite is like the easiest thing because I could have just smushed it and do a messy puddle of clay and it still would have looked pretty just because Lab's pretty. <laughs> like, so the la I feel like the gemstones do the hard work for me. That way I can just kind of like, eh, beads. <laughs> oh, Tara says, is your Cricut mat intended for cutting? Um, yeah, I try to not use it for cutting too much though. Because it scars up real easy and I use it for taking pictures for on the website. But eh, it's still looking kind of rough. Okay, so I'm going to take one. And I'm going to thread on a tube crimp bead. I'm going to thread on the link. Thread that down. Crimp and crimp and smush. Crimp and bead. There you go, baby. We have 25 of those. Mm -hmm. Cool. So there's one. I'm going to go ahead and get the other three set up for him. Bye, zombie. Thanks for hanging out. Zombie, zombie. You wouldn't think it, but talking nonstop into a fan really drives your throat out. I wouldn't have thought it. <laughs> squish and squish and crimp. So there's the second one. Where would you like for me to put these? They're about the pendants. Oops. Oh, I hit the tripod. Sorry, guys. Oh, and I flipped it around, too. There we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I put the link on. Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> I'm threading it through, putting it onto the ring. Uh, what wire gauge did you use for the pendant and necklace? I had made the hole for the pendants using an 18 gauge wire that I then removed, and then this is a .018 millimeter beading wire so this is not a wire that would traditionally be used in wire wrapping it's very very specifically bead um bead stringing wire and this is the stuff that i'm using is beadalon 49 strand Oh, I guess that's for what kind of crimp beads to use. Huh. Hey, Kimberly. She said, I missed the technical terms. Boop, squish, smush. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a duck. It has those little slappy orange feet. If it's a boop, it's a boop. Quack. <laughs> Bye, Marie. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, the 49 is nice. It's more expensive than, than the 7 strand, but worth it. Nicole says, do you sell any of your work wholesale? We do not. Um, now, if somebody walked past our booth and wanted to just buy everything, we would... We would sell them everything, but it would be at the price that it's listed at. We price our stuff as absolutely low as we can. Um, and then we 
uh, <laughs> like, and we've been very lucky that, uh, we don't have too hard of a time moving our product. We've worked really hard over the past decade or so, almost over the past, since 2008, however many years that is. Yeah. Um, you said 25? Beads? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I know. Okay. Um, but we've worked really hard to fine tune our sales pitch and our sales locations um, that, as well as our online presence, that uh, we have a hard time keeping up with you know, making as much product as what people will buy from us, so. I know. You're perfect, honey. I'm going to set that off to the side just for a bit. Forget it. Well, I'm still going to nag and micromanage you. Uh, where are those mark, mark, mark. tiny little bead tweezers? I don't know, but I could have really used them. <laughs> oh, I found them. Yep, those ones. Love you. <laughs> Love you, too. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, right on, Laura. Okay, so I'm gonna have to steal beads from Randy. What? <laughs> well, from the top section. Oh yeah, that's fine. Because this one's all full of crap. Um. Okay, so it starts with... And now we just get to do more of the same. So do y'all have any questions? And I'm going to try it. Who suggested it? Doing from, was it Marie? Starting from the ends and working my way in? No, oh, that way makes madness. Well, yeah. I'm going to take this from you. And then... One, whoops. Two, three, four. There we go. And then what's the next one? Four millimeter brass again. Honestly, I couldn't tell you a different, like, I mean, the 49 seems to drape well, and the 7mm feels a little bit more delicate, but I don't know if, like, the uh, strength between one or the other. I'm presuming the 49 strand is stronger, but I have no evidence of that, like, to support it. Um, Kelly says, how much will you be selling the polymer clay pushed into the metal pendants? Polymer clay pushed into the metal? The ones you did last time for the resin oh these um probably like oh, wait. i have no idea randy and i haven't talked about it uh no less than five possibly as much as ten yeah we might do them for ten or eight i don't know but yeah i need to put bales on those there's a couple of them that aren't aren't fit to sell so i'm gonna pop them into the dud bin Yes, definitely, Sarah. She says, will you get and share some pictures of your booth at Dragon? Definitely. Drive around and set up at events around the States. Oh, that would be so cool, which you know. Yeah. Okay, so I got that far in. Boop. boop, boop, boop. This is a much better way of doing it, I do think. I'll need to time myself. It's tricky, though, because I get distracted. Ooh, well, I got some 4mm moss agate over here that I'll use up. <laughs> you get distracted? What? No, well, that doesn't sound like me at all. <laughs> I don't know how I get anything done. Actually, I do. It's I'm a pollinator. I have to go around from flower to flower, visiting it for just a brief moment before moving on to the next. And so the full flower doesn't get pollinated all at once, but it does end up getting pollinated. Before and after pick. Hope you sell out. Ah, oh, me too. <laughs> 
I don't know how I feel about that. At this point, if we completely sell out, we'll have $30,000. How would you feel about $30,000? <laughs> I don't know, because that was a lot of work. That was a lot of work, but can you imagine getting paid for all your hard work? I can get paid. Oh, shh. <laughs> it's okay. You need to say, imagine all the plants you could buy for $30,000. Imagine all the land we could buy. Not very much. Yeah, land is expensive. But... Uh-oh. This. Okay. This one. Okay, what's the next feed? Another glass one. I'm really pleased with the UV resin. I, I had always, like, kind of been a little scared of UV resin because I was having terrible results with it um, using the, uh, even the tiny Pandora, um, like, the one that was sold on her website of the UV lamp. My resin was still coming out uh, inconsistently sticky. And so I was like, well, maybe I just need a bigger lamp. And then I looked in the sky and I was like, bigger lamp. <laughs> and uh, just put going ahead and putting it out in the sun. That will never work. That will never work. Okay. Woof. I'm, I'm going to use the one that's already strung up instead of looking back at Randy's thing. Because <laughs> apparently I can't process upside down. Okay, brass again. My first and only experience with two-part resin was bad. It pulled away from the edges and was covered in bibbles. <laughs> to shreds, you say. To shreds, you say. <laughs> See, and Kit, that's the experience I had had with UV resin. Because there was that Lisa Pavelka, like, from Hobby Lobby, that UV resin. It pulled away from the edges pretty bad on the stuff I tried to finish. Our prep's going pretty well. We've reached the point of we've mentally broken and are just having fun now. <laughs> Did you say that's relatively accurate? To shreds, you say. To shreds, you say. <laughs> like, we, the power went out yesterday, and Randy and I had to take a little bit of a impromptu, like, unplanned evening off. Uh, and it was amazing. And I had actually looked at Randy and it was like, you know, our life's pretty amazing when we slow down to live it. Because we've, like, guys, we have... <sighs> I'm not exaggerating when I say we've had at least a 12-hour day almost every day for the past five weeks. Um, but it got us where we wanted to be. It had at least a 12-hour day. Yeah, at least. Like, a 12-hour day was like, whew. Taking it late today, huh? Yep, taking it late. So, um... It's just been pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, I needed an afternoon off. So we went and watched a movie we knew nothing about? Yeah, it was the Dragon Ball... The new Dragon Ball Super movie. And I think you enjoyed it more than I did. It was a good movie. I'm so dopamine, de like, detoxed right now that, like, everything, and even mildly entertaining, is like, oh, Disneyland. Like, it's so much fun. <laughs> so, but that's good. A, a good uh, un unanticipated side effect of doing nothing but work for five weeks. <laughs> No, yeah, all work and no play it does not make the phone a dull boy. Mm mm. All work and no play hopefully makes us a shit ton of money. Yeah. Alright, I need those beats. Chop, chop, boogie, boogie, don't hassle me. <laughs> Ooh, can I use the tweezers? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, these were probably one of my favorite free gifts from Fire Mountain Gems, and they're just little bead tweezers that are so nice. They're like concave on the inside, so they'll hold a little round bead. 
Man, I am like super zoomed out. Are the necklaces that you're making in your bead shop? Can you make, can make it to the show? Ah, cannot make it to the show. Um, they are not in our shop yet. Uh, we will be uploading some things to our website after Dragon Con, depending on what doesn't sell. Um, and just kind of you know how we can go about it. So definitely keep an eye on our Monday shop updates for if you want to buy some jewelry jewelry. <clears throat> Making jewelry is fun, but you want some finished pieces? <laughs> yeah. So there's those. Okay, so now. <clears throat> <clears throat> but just little things you can do, like bringing your, reducing the amount of space you have to travel between your beads and your tray, the fewer times you have to set a tool down, just little things like that can really help boost um, the efficiency. Because it's not always about, you know, busting out as much inventory as possible. Sometimes you just want to use your time efficiently. Black. <laughs> Nothing, Miss Bezos. Miss Bezos? Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Going like, to the bathroom really cuts in on productivity time. Just pee in a bottle. Yeah, or better <laughs> yet, don't drink any water. That way you don't have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. No. You're just mad you don't get paid. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm mad we don't get paid, too. <laughs> Bye, Tashers. Thanks for hanging out. Should be 25. Joette says, are you sure that you didn't shoot out the power so you could take a break? I would have. <laughs> Here, what'd you say? Well, <laughs> it's a good strategy for next year. Yeah. Like... <clears throat> and just like that, it also really, really helps to have another person to do work while I'm doing work. It's like, what's the secret to getting so much work done? Indentured servitude. Yeah. Nicole says, just add one dollar to your prices so you get paid. No, nah, we. I mean, honestly, we we have started setting it up to where Randy does actually get paid as a contract laborer now. It's just our work is our life, and anytime we make any money, um, we already have things that the money gets allotted to. And it's gone. And it's gone. Um, but so, you know, investing back into the business, um, oh, I already have these out. I just need to steal them from your tray, but I mean, that's, that's not a bad idea. It's just raising our prices would just, we'd still find other ways to spend it other than paying ourselves. Cause like, I mean, all of our needs are met. We like, we have enough to buy groceries and keep our bills paid. But uh, everything else, every penny goes towards um, we're saving up for our forever home. We want to get some land. So we f we did the whole Dave Ramsey thing and uh, got out of debt. Yeah, that's something I don't know if we told you guys. Like, this was back during Rona, but we were able to bust it real hard and be real frugal. And... Uh, all of y'all's support here on YouTube and on the website, we were able, you know, to get all of our consumer debt paid off. And, uh, so we're, we're really, 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 really hopeful that we can, uh, stay debt free for the rest of ever. If we can swing it. But that does complicate how are we going to, uh, buy land without a mortgage. So... Yeah, not exactly looking forward to jumping right back in. Yeah, but I look forward to living out some dreams on our land. It's, oh, uh, a YouTuber that we watch, um, Steve, he does, like, stealth camping. Had had some really bad news that, um, really, I mean, I always, I, it's been heavy on my mind since losing Callie and Sam Dog anyhow. Uh, this has just been a hard year. Um, but it's tomorrow's promised to no one. And, uh... 
So trying to balance planning for the future and investing in our future and trying to live our best life today as well is just tricky. Because Randy and I are both are very much ants rather than grasshoppers. We would both rather work to make tomorrow better than to slow down and, you know, in, just enjoy today. <laughs> so we're working on that though. Right on. Okay, so there's those. What's next? As far as my little ant brain is concerned, Do what? winter is still coming. I didn't hear the first part of your sentence. So as far as my little ant brain is concerned, winter is still coming. Mm -hmm. Same. But it's I have a lot of fun working with you. Like truly, it's it's been it's been stressful these past five weeks because we've been at maximum RPM. Um, but I've still been having a really good time. There's nobody else I'd rather have been this miserable with. <laughs> There's nobody else you'd rather smell this bad with? Yep. Yeah, there was a week there that we just didn't bathe. Thank God they can't smell us in the live streams. Yeah. We did bathe recently before this one, though. I think. I think twice if you're alive. <laughs> I mean, I play in the hose. That's bathing. <laughs> when I go out to water the garden. <laughs> Truthfully, there for a minute, uh, I think, um, what's this dog's name? Millie? Millie. Uh, was more bathed than we were. Yeah, well, she kept... she kept falling into the... Yeah, <laughs> the into pond. the pond, or rolling in Lord knows what. <sighs> Mickey says, mortgage is the kind of debt you want. Great for your credit rating. Hmm. Ah! So no smell o vision streaming? Mm, I don't know. Y'all have to pay extra for that. <laughs> I paid extra for smell o vision when all I got was this nasty. <laughs> and all I got was pink eye. <laughs> These nasty smell nippies. And pink eye. And pink eye. Okay, four millimeter beads. There we go. So a strategy that I'm using to try to help further diversify our inventory is you'll notice here the pendants that I've lined up for Randy to, to string with these. We had one in this color scheme, we have one in the copper, and then we've got a silver brass, and then this one's our odd man out. It was the 21st so uh, of them, so we're going to do an extra one in this setup. But that way, I'm going to keep going through that rotation. That way, when we run out of uh, beads and need to do kind of a different strung design, I'll still be able to kind of equally distribute it between the different uh, colors of settings that we had done. Here you go. Nothing like finally getting a bead that you've been struggling with on. Mm -hmm. Only to realize that you need to take it back off because you forgot the bead cap. Oh no, baby. <laughs> because it wasn't in the lineup. Hashtag crafter life. Oh, did I not put it in there? No. Like, did I miss one or? They're just up here. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. It makes it real clumsy to try to put them. No, I understand. Okay. But yeah, it's tricky. I forget it a lot too. What? Two months ago, my dad had a spot on his face. Today, he has stage four cancer. Oh, pro. And has had half of his life, or half of his face removed, half his neck removed, lower eyelid and upper eyelid. Every day is a blessing. Oh, pro. I'm really so sorry. sorry to hear that. Hmm. Yeah. Of all the years for our, uh, Laser to not work. To, this year would have been my favorite year to do butt flicks for. <laughs> this year? Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's really sucked. <laughs> it sucked for us. I yeah. I don't know if it's been as bad for everybody else, but then again. Well, it doesn't sound that great from what people are saying. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like it's, I mean, everybody we know is having a hard time. What up, my man? Is he in the kennel? He is. Or she can't get him. Yeah. For your own protection, buddy. Yeah. Mm 
The Millie Monster waits for no one. <laughs> yeah, I think I want to do some of these with Amethyst and Opalite. And Lepidorite as well. After Dragon. No, like the other half of these, because I'm going to be running out of Okay. Uh, beads. Not the center component. No, no. Okay, so also, if you're in a position, like how I am here, where you have some beads that are kind of not quite matching the same color scheme, but you're tired of dodging them, you can just scooch them a little further away from the center point of the necklace. Okay, so now coming through... pretty ones now. I think we have mosquitoes in here. My ankles are all itchy from the mosquito bites. How's it going, baby? <gasps> are you alright? Did you get it? Where? Yeah. Ah, I, I saw it. something dead fall off of you. Yeah. Woo! You committed to murder. Have a cookie. <laughs> you I earned it. <laughs> Speaking mm. of mosquitoes. <laughs> uh-huh. No more. No more? Yeah, pro. Anytime, man. Yeah, Randy Vaughn slaying bugs. Okay, so now I just do. Eee! There's that one. Two. Three. to the, there you go, I'm sorry, I took your plier, er, you're used to this by this point, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You're very kind to tolerate me, without complaint. <laughs> he says I paid all my credit cards off. Um, then I went to Michael's and Hobby Lobby and Dollar Tree. Yeah. Now it's we had been thinking about getting a cash back credit card um, for our business expenses that are pretty predictable every month. But I mean, for years, Randy and I don't use credit cards. Like we don't even have one. Um, it's just, we, we watch a lot of Minority Mindset with Dispute, Dispute Singh, and um, I kind of took a page out of his book, and it's if we can't afford five of them, we can't afford one of them. So that makes us really save and pay attention and be diligent about whenever we buy stuff. Okay, here's this. Yee! Okay, got it? But it's all, oh, we've been researching so much about the land and um, just dreaming dreams because we're pretty sure that this land is like not right for us. We're still going to go look at it. We're going to prove without a doubt 
that it is not perfect. Um, <laughs> right on, bro. It's, I just don't know if I can be trusted uh, to keep a credit card. I, I don't know if I'm that disciplined, and I'm not real interested in testing my boundary on that. I admire folks who do have the uh, diligence and discipline. Okay, so I'm just getting this one crimped. So that's another one down while Randy was stringing. Alright, alright. You gonna let him? Yeah. Thank you, baby. Ten more. With ten more beads? Yep. Okay. Oh, I love that one. That's probably my favorite of all of them. I really like the oval bead. It left just a little bit more room to do designs. But I like how each of these came out, like even the sculpting, though I tried to duplicate, each one came out just a little different. Mmm, right on, Pro. I'll have to pick your brain a little bit more about that, because it's, I'm really bad about, like, I'm afraid of hidden fees and just doing something even just a little bit wrong and screwing everything up. Ooh, this is my Z-Dream. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the four for this one. Nope. What a um, Shoot, I hope I have enough of this wire. What a terrible night to be a dog. <laughs> so there's two. And then one no. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're ten minutes over. We're supposed to be uh -oh. having a break and doing the after party. <laughs> Meanwhile everybody else is like shh. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Don't tell her. Jean says credit cards will bite you in the butt. And that's why I've just avoided them. And it's, I mean, we don't do anything on credit anyways. Uh, it's been interesting when we have to, like, get a vehicle. Because they're like, you don't have any credit. Mm -hmm. You are ghosts. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. I like it that way. Right on, Laura. They sleep like the dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alrighty, guys. So we're gonna, we're gonna go let the dogs out. And hey, Randy. Let the dogs out. I love you. Everybody did. <laughs> Time to go let your dogs out, guys. But thank you, guys, so much for coming and hanging out with us. We will see you in the after party. If you would like to join into the after party, you can become a channel member if you want. You can join our Happy Crafter Club for as little as a dollar over on our website, backtoearthcreations.com. Uh, keep an eye on your email because that's where we'll be sending the link to. And if you aren't into any of that stuff, thank you guys so much for just for being here and for hanging out and for being you. Ooh. So again, there's the, there's Millie and Z wrestling. <laughs> there's all 300 dragon eyes that Randy has made. He's a beast, y'all. A product placement. <laughs> and uh, we will see y'all in the after party. And if not, then we'll see you after Dragon. So, actually, we do have a vlog premiere uh, on Saturday at like 4 p.m. 4 p.m. It's still uploading. It's still uploading right now. <laughs> so, we will see you guys. Thank you so, so much for being here. And mwah, happy after crafting. After party starts 10 minutes late. It does it? Yep. Oh. <laughs> gotta give us time. After party starting at 7.40 instead of 7.30. So we'll, we'll be working on it. Ah! Crafty Songbird says it's been two years since I've seen you live. What's been up with you guys and how much are those things on the table? Uh, we think we're going to sell them for 40 But it's going to be a dragon and then after the thing. But we've been doing good and it's good to see you. But we will see you everybody later. Mwah. Yeah, we have no idea. Okay, <laughs> bye guys. <laughs>